All right, y'all. Welcome to the What More Can I Say podcast uh, episode. Right where we at, bro? One seven three. Welcome to it, everybody. I'm on your host, Tom Phone. Woo, 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 woo. woo, woo. <laughs> oh, thank you, Kiki. Yes. Forget Zach. Yeah, man. Let's go ahead and introduce you to the other members of the pod. It's first lady of the pod, the only lady of the pod. I like to say, instead of BBW, she is fluffy and fine. Her name is Kiki. Hey, friends. Woo woo. Woo woo. Yep. Woo woo. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's. So, uh, where did the glasses come from, Kiki? I just put them on my purse because this is new from Shein. Make sure y'all go shop and use my code on air, Kiki, 15Q3, at checkout. <laughs> What's your code? My code is on air, Kiki, 15Q3. Okay. How much you get off? 15%. <laughs> That's free, oh shit. That damn is. That's Come free. on, yes, baby. So go hook it up. Oh my mm. God. All right, all right. He is the funny man of the pod. Uh, little bro, Zach Bull. What's up, woo-woo. boss? You woo-woo. know what I'm saying? Let's woo-woo. have it, big dog. What's up, killer? Let's have it. You all right? Yeah. You cool? We good. Why yeah. y'all you so right? aggressive? Let's get it. Huh? Why y'all so aggressive? Because I've been fighting for my life before the pod even started. Yeah, they've been in here getting started. So. Look, we, what we were all right, what we were debating is about SIU, Carbondale, and Tennessee State. Nice now, place. although Tennessee State is an HBCU, I said that Carbondale, we had some of the best. We held down probably a good 10 years with players ball of college funding. Oh, it's, yes. It, it's legendary. Shout out. And I don't know if Tennessee State had that the whole run. You talking about a party for 10 years, one party. Tennessee State was a party every day. We okay. partied Wednesday through Sunday, okay? It got so bad, they stopped Friday class. What? They stopped. Right now, they don't even have classes on Friday. What they don't kind of teachers y'all got? Because they was like, y'all be too turned up on Thursday, okay? <laughs> and nobody and was in school. Nobody was coming <laughs> on Friday. It's This is a different. It's a lifestyle. You talking about a party tent. Homecoming, TSU homecoming has lasted over 100 years. TSU hmm. homecoming is probably legendary. It's lasted over 100 but years. we had some strong parties at SIU, too. I'm pretty sure y'all have. I'm not saying. I heard yeah, about people, players people, ball. That's what I'm it's saying. A, it's a big deal. It was a y'all big did deal. y'all thing. Y'all yes. did y'all big one with it. But it shouldn't be compared. Like Kiki say, Kiki think of comparison as disrespect. And it I get is. it now. It is. Now I get it. Because you keep trying to compare a Carbondale party to TSU, and it's not. It's not. We party every. I don't know. If, I we, don't know if TSU ever had. Have y'all a ever party had a, of that magnitude? Did y'all yeah, ever have a le- players by a legend? Did y'all ever have a party every Wednesday at noon? Now you we have one every that. Wednesday. It's called the courtyard. Every Wednesday, you would go to. I would go to Macy's and get polos because I knew I was coming back at noon. On a and Wednesday. On everybody on Wednesday at noon, everybody's out there. The DJ set up. Everybody's strolling. The Greeks is strolling. It was a party every Wednesday. My TSU people, please put in the comments. Tell him about Courtyard Wednesdays. It was a consistent thing. We, had, we ain't had like, it ain't like, oh. We had Student Center Mondays. <laughs> With no DJ. It just, it, it, the DJ is out there. And then different organizations host the Courtyard. So yeah. one week the Alphas are having. One week the Kappas are having. One week, uh, let's say, Huge. Kiki's in the... Uh, you know, not you didn't even necessarily have to necessarily be a Greek to oh, host women the court, at y'all. church women. women yeah, they sing. might have it one week, but usually <laughs> what you it was trying the, to do? it was the same, huh? Oh, I thought I was. It was some shade. I thought you was trying to throw some shade. No, we just no, said like, you say, women can sing. You are that's one of your church services. You you you, you Kiki, can you, you sing? All of the church. I've always wanted to know that. Can you sing? I can do a little. I can sing. Sing. Yeah, I, can, I can, you know, ooh, a little me me me. No. You know? no. <laughs> like, can you church sing? I can. Uh, let me tell you, so I joined the choir for one day, and I quit because it was too hot up there. <laughs> so I can't, I can't do the choir. Okay, I got the singers and lights, and I'm like, and you know, how when it get good, the choir director like, do it again. No, baby, that's the end of the song. You do it like this, yeah. Nothing you know. but God. So yeah, I'm not made for it. I'm not. Uh-uh. Oh. Yeah. Oh my oh. gosh. Oh, that was fun. Okay. All right, guys. Let's okay. Get to it. Uh, Joe Budden, Young Miami going back and forth. Kiki, you were the third city girl. What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Carisha and JT. Um, 
Yeah, so about this, I think both truths were, you know, both points were valid. You know, Joe didn't lie about what he said about her, and she didn't lie about what she said about Joe. That's all I really got about it. You know mm. what I'm saying? Like, he called her the worst female rapper ever. There's no lie there. She's a great person, cute. I love her Instagram. She's just not a great rapper. We all know that. We never loved Carisha for her rap skills. You know no, what I'm saying? No, no, no. She's a personality. Yeah, 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 Joe, you're now also a personality. It took, you know, your music career didn't go maybe where you had the potential to go. Easy. He is a personality. Uh, but, 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 but see, the thing about when people go at Joe like that, Joe was nice. He is. That's what Joe I said. Joe was he like, had, nice, like nice. Let me though. tell you one of my best Joe Button verses. We ain't even started five minutes so I had to take my shade. I can't uh, even believe this um, is the thing to, hold on what? this is the thing about Kiki she's about to rap genius us again right now how does she do this like out of the blue us, you, like verses that you would never think Kiki I can't would wait listen to, hear to. This it's verse. about to make sense though in a minute it's okay, tell me. let me hear right, this verse cause guess, guess who song the verse song oh my gosh Marcus Houston <laughs> damn, damn, damn. so if y'all ain't never heard Up in the Club by Marcus Houston in the way Joe snapped on that beat Baby, so don't, I know Joe is ill. I know he's dope. Go ahead, rap it. You know he be, we be in the club, baby. And so you know I don't, I don't want to mess it up. You know Joe, you you ate that. You did your big one on that record. You know you did. Um, but yeah, so I think that Joe had potential to be huge, but you know he's had a he's had a, he's done a great job of staying relevant through his career. He's been on Love and Hip Hop. He's done the reality TV thing. He now has an amazing podcast. I love Joe. But what she said is not necessarily untrue. Like, he just got his gold plaque or something. You know what I'm saying? So she tried to clap back at him. Neither one of them are lying. But, you know, I just don't understand why we fight each other. Now, I mean, I guess a lot of it came, and Zach could clarify this a little bit. Oh, I think it's more about... <laughs> I brought you in it. <laughs> I just, no, I honestly think it just... Everybody looked at the Carisha thing and the Diddy thing and how it was handled. Like, damn. Mm -hmm. Even though I do think it's no way you could tell me that Diddy... It's not still pulling the strings on so much stuff in Revolt. He just stepped away. It's no way Carisha Please is still a thing without Diddy having something mm -hmm. behind it. It's mm -hmm. nothing. It's, I mean, Diddy, like I said, will Diddy ever be back in the front of the camera? I doubt that. But will he always be a businessman that he's been his entire life? I do think that that's true, too. Mm. Zach, what do you think, bro? About what? About this whole thing, man. You just don't even care, do you? About Carisha <laughs> or Joe Budden talking yeah. about each other? Nope. I, that don't interest me at all. Like, I tried to get into this story. I tried. I tried. I even looked at the clips. It did not move me at all. Uh, what Joe Budden was saying was... It was funny, though. You had to give it. He, he smoked a little bit. I get it. I just don't like guys arguing with girls on about no, stuff like I that. 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 Just, it just It's just weird. And especially for me to comment on it, too. It just feels like I'm being what I don't like. You know what I'm saying? And then... Young Miami laughing at Joe Budden. She shouldn't really be laughing at anybody right now either. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like y'all are both doing y'all thing, and y'all both got it. That's why I'm going to leave it. I ain't, I ain't got nothing for it. I tried. Yeah. That's the best I got. All right. That's cool. We'll I'm keep sorry. it moving. All right. And I know that's your brother, and huh? I get it. <laughs> and I get it. And I understand your allegiance to Joe Budden, and I understand it. To win. So that's what I'm saying. <laughs> You been? Well, if you don't put them two damn fingers down, I'm gonna lose my shit. Is that Tony Joe Button? Yeah, <laughs> no, it's the Spider Man meme. Yeah. They look just alike. They look just alike, and no. I get it. And that's why if I never put my fingers up like this. Smack the <laughs> shit out of me. If you ever did that, <laughs> yeah, I can't. Don't. Yeah. It's some stuff I can't do, dog. Nah. What are you talking about? I don't know. I just saw Kiki do it. It looks funny. <laughs> <laughs> you just doing it funny. Just because it's funny. No, I no because. I do agree with him having a, a bit of an opinion, mm -hmm. and you can probably understand because I know I know Diddy and him were cool. Uh, and, and it just like and, and everybody saw the Carisha blow up, and he probably just wants to hear podcast. Of course, you're gonna you're gonna talk about it, and Carisha clapped back the way she should have. I, I I do agree with Zach and you in the sense that yo, it was just everybody got theirs off, but they still both up. You know what I mean? So it's really not they no, got theirs off, but it's just like. Where do we but go from here? It the, ain't nothing to talk about, right? Why are all the, like, it seems like a lot of men are mad at Carisha. Like, academics always is, is going at her. Then you got her and Joe Button beefing. Oh. What is the problem with Carisha? Cur come on, Kiki. Now, this is, so, you, are you doing this for the pod? Or are you just, are you I'm, playing? I don't do anything for the pod. Okay. I just, I don't <laughs> I just, you're doing question. this to the conversation because. I'm serious about that. You know why it is. This is why the whole thing, this is the, 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 
the podcaster, um, like, hey, well, you you didn't get it how I got it kind of okay. situation. Okay. We know how you got it. And it's the truth. Mm-hmm. Well, Carisha, would, would somebody really sign Carisha to be a podcast? We don't know. She is a personality. We don't know if that would have happened or not without a Diddy co-sign. We don't know. Okay. So a lot of people like academics, even Joe Button, in a sense, got it out the mud, so to speak. So, so they're so, mad at her success. So they look at, they just look at it like it's it's been bought, so to speak. Mm. Because if you, I mean, to keep it, let's keep it a buck, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, to name Carisha, please... As the best podcast over those last two years is an absolute joke. When you got Joe Buttons, you got academics, you got drink champs, you got million dollars worth of game, you got uh, what's my brothers that do the invest? Mm. I- I- invest. Y-Y-L. Oh, Angela Rise Arnie podcast. Lisa. Like you come my yeah. my Jesus Christ. Horrible decisions, even though it's on a that horrible decisions to get, but they get topical too. So, I mean, the name Carisha, please, because of the level of guests she had, was probably a lot. That's what caused a lot of people, like, straight up. Yeah. Like, I they, they were like. I'm going to say this. Come on, dog. In defense to her podcast, she might have one of the only podcasts that I know that every episode she put out went viral. The guests. And she got, she is a, uh, she's she is not a good the character, only, too. All up tone. She's good. She, she's she good. did not have guests that nobody else ain't. Hey. Are you telling me? Has she ever Carisha had? Get, please, did she have like new guests in the yay, the yay on drink chat. No, Carisha I'm said not, she the black Oprah. I'm not so saying that. <laughs> Tone, 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 I'm not saying that. I'm just saying she went every time she did an interview, it went viral. She did an interview. Dirk, with, she did a hundred dollars worth of game. She in did the basement a, with money on it. Th- I get it. I'm not saying that, but that was their 300th episode. What's the name? She did a she did an interview with G Herbo. And it went viral. We, you know, how many interviews we've done with her. That that is some st- type of star power. She does. That oh she, no, no, she has. that she brings. She has. You know what she I'm has. saying? Yeah. So you can't. And she, she only had five, six episodes. Do I think she should have won podcast of the year? No, but you can't. Thank you. But to dis like, it's something about people wanting to see her talk. No, and that is that's important. And people like had to like they don't like that. You know what I'm saying? People tune in to her. You don't. You don't have to click and look, but that thing, it go viral because it's Carisha. She's entertaining. She's must see TV. She is must see in TV. everything she does. She is must see TV. Y'all She's say she beautiful. can't rap. She must see for that. When she do a podcast, you must see that. When she do her whatever reality show, I guarantee people gonna watch that. Oh yeah. yeah I'm not saying she's not a star, but I said I. I my but point was what, I understand. The people that had a better pocket. Product. It's okay, fine. You had most of those came off of good moments. The G Herbo interview was off of a the viral. Mo- it was off a viral moment. That's it was all. A moment, that's what a we moment. all doing. No, yeah, we all doing it. But then when you watch the, the podcast, it still has to be a good podcast. Like if you watch Drink Champs, it's a they have a viral moment, but then also the conversation is really good throughout. You, Carisha, please, how much after the viral moment are you watching? None. That, that's all I'm saying. <clears throat> that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying that she's not a star. I'm, I'm not saying, saying I'm not saying she's Oprah. I'm not saying she's the best <laughs> journalist she's in Oprah. the world. No. Like all I'm saying. Tamron Hall? No. I'm not saying that she's a super journalist. All I'm saying is when she come, every interview Jamil she Hill? did, it went viral. I don't know other no other podcast <laughs> that can say that. I mean, every time they every time they put one out, it go viral. Who okay. else can say that? That's true. True. Not us. <laughs> Let's move on. Because we out here. We have six people we watching. Got, Thank you. We got <laughs> like as Joe Budden referred to as by our little podcast. Our little podcast. Our little podcast. Our little podcast. He did give us the air quotes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, hey, he man. was like, yeah, I saw this little podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that was our Drake cosign. Though. Thank that was, you. Uh, we are, we, are, we, we appreciate Drake. the cosign. Yes. <laughs> we done put out 1,700 episodes. <laughs> six people. Six people. Would you <laughs> stop doing the thing? <laughs> I just in my mind, I just see you and Joe like. <laughs> <laughs> no, we are not doing that. What's the song? We twin. be vibing. Yeah, no, but they they twin, twin. Where have is you that? Been? So why do girls do that? Because I see that in the club all the time now. It's just a sign. Just okay. Don't worry. What does right. it mean? Don't worry about it. All right, uh, now that y'all, I gotta throw it down. Feel weird. All right, let's go ahead and get to this. Cam Newton 
uh, kind of got bodied by a therapist. You know the therapist's <laughs> name? Dr. Bryant. Her ah. name is Dr. Bryant. Dr. Bryant, mm-hmm. you a strong one. She had me questioning my life. I listen to She's that. She's good. Like, Whoa. Yes, and fine. Beautiful. Oh, yes, yeah, beautiful woman. Yes. And Come smart, and smart. And Cam, Cam, although is very articulate, he, come, he, and he was trying to, he couldn't do it. Mm-mm. He couldn't do it. He couldn't. He was in, he was in way above his head. Yeah. Way, way. And the 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 part of the interview that I just loved is when she was listening to him. Cause mm. he thought he was getting her. And then she would just take every piece of that argument and destroy it in front of his face. Yes. She was Oof. cold. She's cold. So cold. But that's what happened when you deal with a real doctor. She knew what she was saying. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Somebody said to Cam, just cause he dressed like that. <laughs> Across his legs, he think he did. Because he wore them glasses yeah. that flip up. They said, they said Cam, just because you wear them hats and them clothes across your legs don't mean you smart. Just because you dress like Dr. Seuss. Yeah. Do not, that do not mean that you don't. Yeah, that's funny. That was funny. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I, I thought I thought some some of her comments were a little bit what she was saying like about the broken families and stuff mm-hmm. like that. I just mm-hmm. don't like that. I don't like... Maybe because Cam was saying he was choosing to do it in a sense of I hate it when men get the broken family thing. When okay. we get the when you see a family that's it. broken, I it could be it don't have to be our fault all the time. It could be both people's fault. It could be her fault. Mm-hmm. But you always look at a man as a broken family. And I and in my opinion, to be honest, I I mean, I've seen my mama maybe endure some situations just to kind of keep a situation cool and it wasn't good for her. It wasn't good for it. So, I, you know, I think about sometimes, like, would it have been cool if I had to try, try to endure some stuff? Or would is it better now? It's really no real right and right or wrong answer in that one because you just don't know how it would turn out. Right. Uh, but I, well, that was the only part of that conversation that I was like, eh, I mean, you kind of putting it all on him. What, if the what woman, was the part? I missed it. What did she say? Which is basically, like, he's creating these broken households, and it was him— but he said he's doing it on purpose in a way. And right. he's, he's choosing to do that, opposed to like a person like me. Like, hey, in all good intention, the households that I had, I, w- I wanted them to work out. What was his point of saying? Why, did, why was so he? So she asked him, how many children do you have? He said eight. And she said, okay. And how many baby mothers? He said three. And then she said, okay. And he said, believe it or not. And nobody asked him for this. He said, believe it or not, I want more. And she oh. said... You want more what? And he was like, I want more kids. And she was like, hmm, that's a bit irresponsible. And then it went from there. Because in a prior statement, he was saying that some people judge his lifestyle and call him low functional because he has so many children and he's not married. Mm -hmm. And she said, that's, she said, you are low functional. And he couldn't, he couldn't understand why she would label him as low functional, but she was labeling him as low functional because you have created all of these different families that you're not 100% a part of. So these homes are now broken because you have went and created them. And then you are so bold and so selfish that you want to create more broken homes without the intent to marry and Mm -hmm. create stability for your family. So then he did what a lot of men do is dance around the topic. And then he tried to say, well, my kids live with me. And she's like, okay, they still broken families. Their mother's not in the house with you. So it kind of... I think it opened his eyes, honestly. Even oh, it though did. he didn't want to admit it in that moment, but I think she like flipped a switch for him because she was so graceful with it, which I love. And I try to, I, I, I try to, I'm trying to work on that for myself when I get passionate about a topic that I can be graceful in delivering my message instead of cussing y'all out. So, because <laughs> when I was watching her, I said, oh, she cold. Because I would have flipped the table and been cursing him out at this point because I didn't say the same thing three different ways. And you trying to, like, you don't understand what I'm saying. And I know I'm clear. But she kept re-explaining it to him, like, you have created broken homes. And he did not like that. So, I think she, but I do think she hit a nerve for him, for him to realize that for you to keep, you just had a baby. He just had a new baby mm-hmm. with Jasmine, or uh, Jazzy, I think it's her name on Instagram. I, I really uh, like her. Jazzy, mm-hmm. the comedian. He just had a baby with her. Mm-hmm. They're in a, what seems to be a relationship. Um, but even in the interview, he said it like he waiting on God to send him a wife. And, uh, send, 
And it's like, hello, you just had a baby, you know. So she's being dragged all over the internet because of the interview. He's being dragged all over the internet because of the interview. Mm. But I think valid points were made in that interview. And I'm, I'm shout out to Dr. Bryant. Shout out to Dr. Bryant. Yeah, it was strong. It that's, made me think about stuff. But I, I, but I knew you ready to get married. Am I ready to get married? I would. I, I'm way better. I think I'm yes. better now in a sense of I can I, my. Mm. Decision making process is better. Okay. It's never. It's that it, there's things I actually have standards. I think a lot of men we don't have standards for women. Like y'all have standards for us. My man got the. You ask a woman what you what she wants. She gonna be like, I want my man to be. Bop, 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 mm-hmm. bop, 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 mm-hmm. bop. Dudes, we gonna be. Like, uh, she fine. <laughs> <laughs> she fine. Uh, can she cook? Can she? Uh, and, and and those are those. Once you get past that stuff and you living with somebody, you are in a relationship. You realize as you grow up, you realize that now it's way more than that. But then there's also the fact that I always say that, yo, I learned how to be a man from my homies in the street a little bit, a little bit from my best friends, fathers, Mm -hmm. and then just for what I saw and learned on the fly. Right. So it took a long time for it to become all at one, opposed to having, that's what you say when you're creating these these broken homes. Shout out to to myself because I got my son and I'm able now able to try to, mold him in these next few years of giving him a giving him some some framework to work with on how to handle certain situations. Mm. There it is. Shout out there to you, is. brother. And shout out to you getting your son, man. Man, you too. Thank you, brother. You too. We had a we had a talk. I mean, it was just it's always something for me. Like for me. And I and I don't think I don't think his mom's doing a bad job. It was just my turn. Yes. It was it wasn't it wasn't even about you doing a bad job or nothing. It's my turn. That's it. It's, it's it. It's my turn. Uh, let's go ahead and get to this, man. Judge Mathis. Holy moly, Kiki. I know you shed a tear when you saw this. <laughs> After 39 years yeah. of marriage, they have called it quits. Miss Linda. I don't know. Miss <laughs> everybody, Linda. Everybody started tagging me, sending this to me, <laughs> telling me it's my time. And I joke and say that Judge Mathis is my old man crush. Everybody knows yeah. that. He knows that. I told him that to his face. But Miss Linda, whatever he did, he's sorry. Okay? <laughs> he is sorry, sis. Take him back. We cannot. 39 years. We got to die together. 39, 39 years, years. Ain't no. This is death row. Ain't no leaving. And nobody's leaving. Burn the house down. Change the weather like Jay Z say. Whatever you got to do, uh, uh, Judge, you got to get back right with Miss yeah. Linda because ain't nothing good gonna come to you if you let Miss Linda leave. I'm sorry. I I joke and play around a lot, but I I don't want to see nobody lose a marriage after 39 years. 39 years is a long time. That's a long time. They got grown kids. They got beautiful grandchildren. Judge has worked. They have both worked hard to build his fabulous career. Now is the time for y'all to be retired, relaxing, traveling out there on Cookie and um Magic Boat. Okay, they yacht. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Y'all supposed to be out there with the rest of them, Holly Dizel and his wife. All of them supposed to be black. You know, right. black and rich and just living life so whatever he did he forgot to take the meat out the freezer he you got fed up sis whatever he did he is sorry and it's time for y'all to mend it if y'all want me to come over there and fix it i will fix it how you gonna fix it i will talk to both of them they will hear me i'm I, I, for real y'all i feel like i have watched judge matches has been a part of my life since i was like five years old he has been in the living room at my auntie house my grandma house he taught me the game all through college. If you ever want to learn the game, watch Judge Matthews' episodes. He going to put you up on crackheads, thieves, <laughs> drug dealers, all type of stuff he going to teach you about. He has been an <laughs> intricate part of my life. So when it comes to the judge, I don't play. Don't so play. I'm serious don't about play. this. Miss Linda, we can fix this. Don't, oh don't do it, sis. God. Don't do it. Don't do it. It ain't worth it. Uh, uh, Zach, you see this, 39 years of marriage uh, is an awful long time for your wife to say, I'm gone. Do you even let your wife leave? I, I'm probably going to get a kidnap charge. I mean, 39 years, it, it may, I ain't going to lie to y'all. First thing I said, I was like, man, marriage don't work. It make you believe oh that. Oh, my God. It make you, you believe bro. that. I'm sorry to be that guy, but yeah, it make Zach. you believe that. After 39 years, Kiki, so it's working. <laughs> If you done did 39 years and you ready for me to leave, guess what? That means you've you been mad the last 10. 
Right? Because you said that women leave before they think. So Probably. here's what I'm trying to say. If you decide to go at 39 years, you'll leave. I'm just what I'm trying to say. Now, I don't know. I'm, I was about to add a little piece, but go ahead. No, I don't know many marriages that have lasted all the way through. Yeah. And it's like, it makes me feel like. Cynthia Bailey. It makes, it makes. <laughs> yeah, we shout out to Cynthia Bailey. We interviewed her on our other show. On uh, TSR so, so Live. Ain't no and, grandmas or none in your family still. Like, all my aunties stay with their husbands till they died. Now, how all their husbands just mysteriously died within like a year, everybody's yeah. husband just started dropping dead. Yeah. But they did stay with them. You know what I'm saying? So, marriages, I feel like it can work. You might die, but it can work. I mean, death is a part of it ending. Yeah. You know, till death do its part. So, if death did your part, it is what it is. Right. I get it. But I ain't seen many. So, what I'm trying to say is, if something every every like I'm taking all Kiki sayings today, every every uh every pot, pot got a lid, <laughs> all right. Every hat got a lid, whatever the hell it was. Every pot got a lid. So if you show me if I put twenty on the board and you show me one that works, the theory you're not science. You don't go with the with the one. You know what I'm saying? The you're not gonna build the equation based off the one because that one made it through. You're gonna build the equation off the twenty. And what I'm trying to say is. If you look at the totality of marriages, most of them fail. So is, is it a good idea? I'm just posing the question. We keep saying this, okay? If if 70% of planes fell out the sky. <laughs> if 70% of planes fell that? out the sky, how many of y'all would ride them? <laughs> be You'd be like, I ain't train. getting on that, Mark. Train like and you'd be like, I wouldn't go 70% of them in the They'd be like, but then Keon be like, uh-uh, my uncle, he got on a plane to California and made it. So uh, so you should just jump out there. No, yes. you're not going to do that. You're not going to do it. It's not. Marriage is the only thing that we see continuously fail, but we keep trying to do. So you wouldn't get married again? I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that. I don't know. <laughs> this is the nap day. Yeah, know. yeah, right. Now, I don't know. Hey, now, hey, uh, hey. Uh, you say all that. I'm saying. <laughs> all I'm saying is this: if you keep seeing something fail, like why is that? Why is marriage the only thing that we that I think in modern society that we continue to see fail at a high rate, regardless of whose fault it is? I'm not blaming the gender or race. I'm not saying. I'm just saying it ends. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Why? That's the only thing that we but we continue to strive for. That's the goal. I think it's. I think some of it's poor selection process in America. I think like what Kiki said before. Or oh, what? Oh, we gonna bring up our other show on TSR Live. Or maybe being with somebody forever is a feat. No, no. But I, but no. Honestly, I think like she said. Like I, okay, perfect example is this. I go. I graduated. And I you know I transferred a few times from colleges. When I eh, and I finally found one, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, when I was transferring, everybody was saying, "Oh man, you ain't gonna get out of school. Damn, that's crazy. Then we gonna get out of school." And, and, and eventually, when I got to the place that fit me, I thrived and got out of school. Got my degree. Nobody knows how long I was in school. It, it, it is what it is. I got my degree. Mm -hmm. So I think what I say that to say is that a lot of times we fall into the pressures. If I had a said, "Okay." I'm going to stay at this school. I could have been unhappy at one school and then not tr and try to stay there and maybe ended up dropping out, not getting my degree or whatever. It, it, it could have ended bad. Well, I say that to say about marriage. A lot of times people are asking, Kiki, when you getting married? Kiki, when you getting married? Zach, when you getting married? You 30, blah, blah. You 30, blah. You need kids. You need this. And people fall into the pressures of that society and then you pick something someone that may not be the person that should be your person. And that's what happened. Yeah, it feel good, but then long term, long term, it starts to unravel. My question, a 39 year one, that, that's just my, something that some something, something question, tragic happened. My that. question is reverse in engineering what you just said. You said the society is saying, um, why you why you not married? Why you not married? What I'm asking is why is society asking that question? What I'm trying to say is, why is that the goal? The reason they're asking that question is because in our mind, the goal is to get married and have children. But what I'm trying to say is, if most of these marriages are failing, why is that the goal? You supposed to free think. I just, I think it, I, I still think, is it, I, I is blame it everything th on not being, having the ability to free think and following <laughs> dumbass, dumbass thoughts. 
from other people. Because y'all know why it's feeling. Half the people in them. Okay, half the people can't get married because they can't find nobody. Okay, well, just that's rush a group. To get married, that's a whole bro. bunch of they people. Then you got a whole married. bunch of people who are doing it, but it ain't working. And you got girls that want to be like, oh, I want the marriage, so they gonna for that. I want that. I want to be the. I want to be the bride. I done been in some weddings. I want to be the center of attention. This dude, I, eh, I know, but forget it. We gonna get married. She know she not long term. Sometime in that situation, they know it. They be, they know it, bro. So it's the woman fault. No, both know, both know. I'm saying like the woman <laughs> knows and the guy. So guys get the same thing. Hey man, you about you. Your mama telling you, you're 30-some years old, you need to start you a family, start you a family, start you a family. What happened? You rush. What did you say? What's your famous com- topic? Famous comment? What? Dudes need to pick better baby mama. Facts. Exactly. So what happens? Dude is trying to make a family and then gets in with somebody, ends up trying to speedball the family in, and he realizes he didn't pick the wrong one. He got, he got somebody crazy. You know why marriage is not working for real, y'all? Talk to us, Tiki. Because ain't none of us living by the Bible. There it is. That's the problem. There it is. Ain't none of us what? Living by the Bible. Come on now. Tell it. Oh, my God. This podcast <laughs> nah, I'm just going to keep crazy. it real with you. Oh, oh, it That's why it's not working. That's the real truth. Y'all ain't following Tell the word. The y'all ain't truth. reading y'all word. Y'all out here just living, making decisions, marrying people God ain't told you to marry, doing mm-hmm. stuff. It's y'all ain't following the Bible, and that is the reason. Now, if you want to have a truth. successful marriage in life overall, Get in your word. It's a it's a playbook on how to do life. That is what the Bible is. It is a playbook, literally, all winning plays. You can't go wrong. Okay? Tell us about the Bible, Kiki. <laughs> What's it's in the Bible? Into a church. <laughs> Tell us oh, about the Bible. That's my thing. Is that's the if you want to win life, it's a playbook <laughs> to get you through life. And if you follow that, you will have a successful everything. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep it real with you. Glory. I'm gonna keep it real with y'all. This is for the person to drink gin. <laughs> <laughs> ain't nothing in the Bible. <laughs> in a playbook. He turned ain't water, water into wine. wine. Not gin. <laughs> Not right. gin. He's still working on me. But I'm just trying to tell y'all. Follow y'all, the gin playbook. Y'all wanna get into success in life? You need to get in your word. Okay. Oh, my all God. All right, all right. But it is true, though, because, you know, you're not even supposed truth. to have sex before marriage. You wouldn't even know nobody else so if you, you followed your if word. You, if you didn't have... That could be lonely. Think about it. If you, if you didn't have sex before marriage and you only got that one piece of... It's like, man, let me tell you something. Hmm. My son's fourth birthday party was this weekend, right? And I don't give him sugary drinks. I do not give him, um, like... And, and when I do give him, when he does drink juice, I dilute it with so much water, it's damn near water. All right, that's how much I put this much juice, and I fill it up with water. He had a, a Sprite <laughs> for the first time, <laughs> and I saw his mind go. This little boy asked for some. He grabbed that little thing, and he said, Woo! <laughs> <laughs> And like I his saw, first hit. I saw him get his first hit of that dope. <laughs> <laughs> that boy been reaching for Sprite and drink all. You, man. He got a hit of that sugar. He said, <laughs> yep. He that I real real sugar. And he said, woo. I love it. See? And they looked back, okay? And that's the same thing. If you was a virgin and you never got a taste of that coochie, or young ladies, if you never got a taste of that man, Doing you like that. You know what I'm saying? We would all be much better off, probably. I'm trying to tell you. Well, that kind of goes into what we were about to talk about. Your your uh, uh, husband. Oh. We don't know. Your celebrity husband. Omarion, he's abstinent. Says yeah. no. Oh, wow. He's the, he, he wants to clear his mind. How you feel about that, Kiki? I'm so proud of him. I am so proud. And see, this is what happens when you don't rush things. Everybody been pressuring me for the last year. When you get married, when you and Big Thing gonna get married, when you gonna ma- when y'all gonna do this and that. I wait on the Lord. And the Lord <laughs> just revealed to me <laughs> that my husband been sitting around for three years, celibate, waiting on me. Okay, he got his man right. He got his body right. Oh he didn't sit back and he didn't oh talk God. to the lady. Now he's p- fully prepared for me. I'm the one out here running around doing the wrong things. Okay, Omarion been ready. So that just confirms. Tim, she's sorry. No, Tim. that no, I no, because I am oh. I married. 
Look, Here she go. the Lord oh, knows. We're trying to get you, Barry. <laughs> it ain't gonna happen. <laughs> it can the way she talked. When the way when people hit me up with this, oh Mario, I've been selling. I said, oh, Mario, been selling for three years. I went and watched the clip. He said, I got my mind right. I control my food intake. I control my sexual demons. I said, I hear you, Lord. This man been waiting all this time for me to unbig my back. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, my God, been sitting around waiting on me to get my stuff together while I'm trying to pressure somebody. No, so I need to go where the Lord is telling me to go, which is to L.A. and get my men. So, oh, I'm coming for you, baby. I'm already working. I stopped drinking pop. I'm down about five pounds. I'm not playing with y'all. Oh, serious. <laughs> <laughs> I, I stopped drinking pop. Nah, hey, it's a few things I got to work on, but I'm coming. Oh, I hear oh. you. I hear you loud and clear. That's why this man ain't went public. Think about it for real. This man ain't went public with nobody else since his baby mama. He been celibate for three years. Who y'all think he waiting on? <laughs> Thank he wait you. you. He waiting on me. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. This lady said she stopped drinking pop. It's crazy. Yes. I got to pull the Tyrese. <laughs> and I just saw online talking about a chicken sandwich that made me want to go order. I Googled it. I was like, where's that chicken sandwich? I, I stopped drinking pop. I stopped drinking. I'm serious. So. You go, you think it's a game. When I go vegan on you, it's up. <laughs> you I cannot go, get skinny. When I go vegan, my Don't man is skinny. waiting on me. <laughs> my man is waiting on me. I, I can't imagine. I can't even imagine uh-huh. even that, like celibate is like is a different type of time. A different type of time. At one What's point, I you, was what, at, at what? one point I was going to try to be a Muslim. And my <laughs> why is that funny? I'm sorry. Why are y'all laughing Chicago, at Chicago. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What is you? Wait a minute. That's not cool. If it's one thing y'all gonna do, baby, y'all gonna go Muslim. If Chicago do is gonna go Muslim. Y'all not going Muslim. Ain't read not a book. I did. Of I was, so what happened is I read the autobiography of Michael Max, oh and I read. I was like, yo, and I was like. And I, it was just some stuff. And I was like, this, I hate y'all, man. Nah. Come on, <laughs> Come on my brother. Come on, Come on, my brother. brother. <laughs> no, nope. Told <laughs> Muhammad. Come on. Yeah, what's your, what's your Muslim name? No, I, no, I don't have one. I'm not going to disrespect <laughs> no, for real, that Tell religion. us for real. I'm not going to disrespect the brother. No, brother, I was going to start that journey. I was going to start, that, was gonna start that journey. I was going to start that journey. My grandma went, was really upset because we got heavy, heavy Christians in my family. Right. And they were they were like she was not feeling it at all. But I was like, yo, I was like, and I was looking at the brothers that I knew that was Muslim. Yeah, I remember and I was like, I respected them. And that was one of the things. They was like, yo, the sex thing. And then that that Muslim thing kind of came at the right time at the at the time that I was getting I was hot in these streets. What's so, the sex thing? Cause you gotta clear your mind, you can't have sex. Not for a little bit. What the Bible been telling you to do? The Bible said don't have sex either. I, 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 I mean, sometimes when I heard of Marianne, I was thinking in my head, how long could I go without? I ain't gonna lie. I actually thought I said I would not. So I said I wonder how long I could go. That's a long time. How long you think you can go? I think I, I think I could get. I think I could get a strong sixty days out. Sixty days. I know I could do two months. Zach, what about you? I could go ninety days. I've done ninety days. Exactly. I don't. I don't. I don't believe a word coming out of. Please. I don't, don't believe you, but I damn sure don't believe him. <laughs> you can't believe. Not I him. don't believe him. Not Zach, him. Zach, Zach, be like, Zach him. be like, this is not actually sex. What we're doing. <laughs> This is this is uh, yoga. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> gonna call it something. Yeah, else. he gonna make up another term. Like I didn't technically have sex with you, but you know we yoga. Uh, yeah, this, I don't trust no, that. Please, we're just it's bonding inside of you. Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. We're bonding inside. for a deeper connection. For a deeper connection. Yeah. It's not sex unless you ejaculate. See? What we're gonna do is <laughs> hold it. So hold it. Oh my God, Tom. brother! No, nah, brother, you I have, demon. I have. I don't get contrary, contrary to your belief. Not I have done you. ninety. I have done ninety days. Ninety days? Mm-hmm. You was wow. in jail. What for? You just serving time? Sometimes I just, I just back off stuff. Yeah. For the alcohol, alcohol, I'll alcohol, do that. weed, sex, vices. Anything that I feel like is vices, I'll back off. Okay? Gambling. I that's not a vice gambling. for me, but. That's my one. For some people, you did. You know what I'm saying? Like, vices, I, I try to stay away from. And that's real. I don't know why y'all think I'm just out here 
some sex demon or whatever, <laughs> but <laughs> type of bro. freaky man y'all think I am. No, you're not a freaky man. You, bro, he's he the Zach, ultimate Zach, freaky you man. The, you the friendly killer, brother. That's all I'm saying. You the. I ain't never seen the uh, nicer oh. killer in my life. The smoothest criminal. The, 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 no. the nicest killer. At like what? Like, bro, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that because you say I talk too much. So I'm gonna just shut up. But I just, you I already right, talk too much. <laughs> I did. I at least I snuck it in. Nobody, they'll have to rewind and watch the pod. Just uh-huh. here. <laughs> we, we go. We go. Move. We go. Move. We go. Move. We go. Move. We go move. Uh, all right, uh, Uncle Luke. Says that Meg the Stallion and uh, along with Nicki Minaj, all of the women right now that are twerking, uh, Ice Spice, they owe him some money, owe him some credit because he was, well, not money, but owe him some credit because he's the first person to start it. In a sense, yeah, but no. What Is you he? think? I don't, I honestly, he not my demo. What? Oh, oh. I'm not even trying to be funny. I'm, that's not a. It's not a joke. What that's happened, bro? You the only person that was alive when. <laughs> when Uncle Luke was popping. Well, when Uncle Luke was popping, <laughs> we weren't alive. Or if we were, we were too little. We didn't know. We were babies. Yeah, I don't want to. Uncle Luke. Uncle Tell Luke. They made Uncle a big Luke. deal. Honestly, they made a huge deal, which is crazy to see what's going on right now. Mm-hmm. They had parental advisory stickers on. He, he had women in thongs. You see okay. women in. But women walk around every day and and work out in thong leggings mm-hmm. and they women in thongs and they were twerking, dancing, and Luke and them was rapping. It was black men rapping. I always thought it had something to do because he had too many white women on there. Oh. Yeah, he had a little white women. I always thought the black dude letting the white girls twerk around him. It was mm. something, something to it. They, oh, that's why the government was mad. I, but the the government was mad at him. Okay, it wasn't just like. Like you know, like groups. It was the government mad at him. Okay, that was that was the craziest thing. But so he I mean, paved the way for the hoes. He, started, he, 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 he wasn't the downfall of society. I mean, it just he was one of the first people to do the twerking stuff. I think it's just Uncle Luke just talking. I just, so why did he just call out the women? It's guys who rap about stuff like that too. No, nah, I he think he just said because up- girls being able to twerk, he made it cool. And twerk and do all of that stuff, bringing it to the forefront of rap. It's kind of the thing, but... I, uh, Uncle Luke just wanted us to talk about him. And that's, what we, <laughs> and that's what we're doing right now. Shout out to you, Uncle Luke. And we appreciate all the contributions that you have made to Hip Hop Brother. That's all he wanted. Yeah. Sometimes you just got to give an old man a little some love. That's all he wanted. Uncle, Uncle Luke, Uncle Luke you did your thing, man. But, but see, the thing of it is, and to a broader point, uh-huh. is that I think that... And I saw this. I think that... We don't give the respect to the, and that's why you have people like Uncle Luke speaking out. You'll see a, 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 a older rapper speak out. Because I, I think for some reason, they feel like the old dudes don't have any game. And I think I saw this clip somewhere, but they yeah. were just talking about it. It used to be, and, I, and, I, and I'm from that from that generation, like when, when the old dude that was the successful old dude, even if he didn't have a lot of bread, because... You gotta remember, I came up in the '90s when, when drug dealers, so drug dealers was at a high. So it might be a young dude on the block that made made so much money. He was rich as hell, but it was a, it still was an older guy that was from the hood, went to college. Everybody knew he had a little street in him, but he went to college, came back successful. He had, he wasn't living in the neighborhood anymore. He bought a house, all type of stuff. But he was cool. You listen to him talk. Right. Because he was, he had a winning mindset. You were, you would just hear him. Mm-hmm. Now, when older dudes speak, if they ain't got a pocket full of money, chains on, younger cats feel like they don't know what they're talking about because the younger dudes got, especially the younger rappers, have way more money than them. That's one of the worst res- mistakes that I think we make as a culture is we don't protect our legends. Right. We don't protect them and we don't hold them to the highest regard that they should probably be held to. Um, because we think we come along and we knew when we popping, but you're not paying respect to the people that paved the way. So I do understand when you say that. That's a serious problem to me in hip hop is that we do not respect our legends or protect them in the way that we should. When you look at a genre like rock and roll, they legends performing to they 90 and they get all the respect and they get all, oh you know what God. I'm saying? All the just do that they deserve. Whereas we feel like after you get a certain age, you whack, you old, we put you on a, a stage play, as you like to say, and we don't <laughs> come back and see you no more. So to me, I think there is a point in that piece, in that regard. Like, <clears throat> for instance, I just went to see Missy Elliott. 53 years old, one of the best concerts I've seen all year. One of the best concerts I've seen all year. 
her name is not mentioned <laughs> enough in all of these conversations about top this and top that. Like people forget who Missy Elliott is and the way the the barriers she broke down and the people she put on. Like when we don't we don't give our legends enough credit. Now on the other hand, Busta Rhymes performed at the same concert. Busta did a lot of talking when I was, you know what I'm saying? Like a lot of ran, like, you know, he need a, Busta need a podcast. But that that's from, that's from frustration. I think I Busta know. does that out of frustration because like, it, it's to your point, he's not, nobody is giving these older rappers that have succeeded their flowers. Like who's that's going true. to be the next Busta Rhyme? Well, what, I just, what you I guys just, say? What are you saying? What's just don't wrong? agree with y'all. Okay. I'm sorry. I don't agree with y'all. Okay. I feel like we, I, I hate the talk of young people don't listen to the their elders. They do. They do. You know, um, Missy has gotten plenty of... She's Isn't she in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Yeah. Okay, that's flowers. That's being respected. Um, her Was her concert sold out? I'm sure it was. Two nights. Two nights. That's being respected. Nobody is shitting on Missy. Missy just be quiet sometimes. Our, our, the way our news cycle is, it's the newest... It's the newest story. Mm -hmm. It's the newest story. But as soon as Missy said she was coming on tour with Sierra and Buster, it was in that news story. Mm -hmm. We do show respect to our legends. I don't. I don't like that idea of we don't do it. And then to your point, Kiki, of <clears throat> the younger, like you know, uh, we'll be like, "Oh, get out of here! You're whack," or this or we that. We will. We do. We do to that, but we do that when they're whack. <laughs> we we actually do that when they're whack. But you don't and, have a respect and being then, there. Exactly, exactly. Exactly. No, hear me out. Hear me beat. out. In okay. other in other genres, <laughs> them young kids may not they don't know nothing about the Rolling Stones yeah, or whoever else. Them Yes, they do. Them, they over there. They over there. They, they over there. They you them, you put them Will Smith ain't, with the new little baby. That okay. ain't right. No, but what I'm trying to tell you is the people who are going to see the people are the people who enjoyed and listened to their music. And that's in every genre. You was in the Missy concert because you liked Missy. My son may look at me. He's four right now. But 10 years from now, if I try to put him on Missy, he may listen. But guess what? You know how many Earth, Wind, and Fire concerts I've been to <laughs> that I have not? And I ain't never seen to, I ain't wasn't around when that, that wasn't my genre of music. Mm -hmm. My mom and them just cleaned up to the music and I liked the music. Been the boys to me in concerts. Uh, who was just here? The old school concert that was just here. To be honest, the old school concerts of this summer outperformed the new music. Uh, people, the new the new artists are the ones canceling shows. The, the old Essence, artists, Essence Fest was probably one of the best concerts the, I've been the, to. In the the old year. artists are the ones selling out still booked. Mm -hmm. So it has That's to true. be some <laughs> level of respect here for these people to so be stop, doing stop, it. So stop what I'm saying right there it, it, to, to kind of combine the points. Mm -hmm. If those artists... The younger artists are start listening to and going to watch these other artists that are generational talents. It will help the genre go. You don't think Michael Jackson watched things of James Brown. You don't think Usher studied Michael Jackson. They watched and learned and maybe even had conversations, even to comedy, something that you want. You don't Tone. think. Hold Quit on, acting finish. like your generation didn't have one hit wonders. No, no, I'm not. No, acting, I'm, I'm, I'm not. That's I'm what not, they do. That's what y'all do. That's what y'all do. Who did Montel Jordan study? Bro, he had you, one song. I came, I came up into the golden era of R&B. There's nothing better than that. You mm. can't argue with it. The golden era of R&B. I, my generation started hip hop. <laughs> NWA, gangster rap, all of these rappers can't, and they, who is going to be the next Ice Cube, bro? Who is going to be the next Will Smith, bro? Why they you? don't respect them. Thank That's you. just a fact. Thank who you. Don't respect who's going to be the next, who is going to be, listen, who is going to be the next Lauren Hill? Who, it, we, it's not about Lauren, it's, it's the fact that, hey, I got all this bread because they making way more money than anybody. Wake, making way more money than anybody. And they're like, man, you ain't make the kind of money I'm listening. I'm making while well, I'm listening to you because I've been around long. Um, if somebody doesn't pick Chris Brown's brain, Usher's brain, it's crazy. It's like, look at this. It's like the fact where Anthony Edwards just said. Anthony Edwards said in the 90s, they did not have any skill. That is the dumbest shit. I've ever heard to say to Magic Johnson, like your little ass will be able to stop a 6'9", 200 plus man because he can't, he ain't doing the moves and stuff that you do. Back then, it was the moves. If, if you telling me that Magic wouldn't be able to do those moves, 
wouldn't be able to learn the moves that, that Anthony, you crazy. They all athletes are athletes. That's it. That, that, that is it. That's that's the thing. You got young boys saying they looking at the nineties basketball players and looking at them like they crazy. You're looking at you can't look at them like that. Because success is success, no matter what. And you'll see long term who is around. There's a reason why here's Nelly. My, it's a my, reason why Jeezy. It's a reason why Usher. That's it's a reason generation. why Chris Brown. That's my generation. That's everybody I saw. No, those are all no, my generation. But I'm, I'm just still just. Name. I'm just but naming. Here, here's what I'm trying. What I'm trying to say is, y'all. The the the, the difference is. We have an a internet-led generation, okay? Your generation knocked it down for others to come through. With the internet-led generation, yeah, there is, hold on, there is no gatekeepers. So what there was, there was a different level, there was a different process that, that you had to go through before you could become a star. Right. Before you could even be seen on TV. Right, 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 right. You knew how to interview, you knew how to talk to people, you, they had three, four records ready for you before mm-hmm, they even mm-hmm, put you out. Mm-hmm. We're at a time now where a kid can come from a YouTube platform and become a superstar by tomorrow. Yes. Okay? So it's not fair to take that person and then compare him to a, a, a person who's been a star since a child like Michael Jackson. It's not even It's not even close. They're not even... You, hear what I'm saying? But, what, but more responsibility falls on them, Zach. But what I'm, what so I'm trying to say... So what I'm trying to say is, is it... Is it the general? Quit blaming the generation and blame somebody groomed. And I hate to use that word because Ooh, groomed yeah, is just careful. a crazy word now. Somebody, word. what I'm trying to say is somebody taught the generation that you're talking about how to be stars. Okay. And so many times with the older generation, y'all blame the kids for not being in the situation like they should already have the knowledge. No, the, <laughs> the, the, it's up to the people who are putting them out to show them the way. Okay. You can't, it's no way you can't, the thing, you know what you did when you didn't listen back then? Your ass wasn't out. Your song wasn't out. Exactly. So the issue is y'all rather have the money and be like, forget it. We're just going to ride with it because this generating money. You can't blame a 19 year old kid from TikTok that he don't know or have no respect. You teach the person who's putting them out, teach them. But. And if you don't you, care, then so quit blaming the kids. You have to kids. be teachable. If you're not problem. teachable, but what I'm trying but to say is more money get than out you, of here. Let me tell you this. If I have more money than you, sometimes it's hard for me to accept whatever you're trying to teach me because I have more money than you. I have more followers than you. I'm more popping to, to, the, to the TikTok world or whoever than you are. So if you're an icon or a legend trying to tell me something and I got more money than you, a lot of times, these artists, what can I, what can you tell me? That's why a lot and of them shut up. And that's why a lot of them shut up. And when I'm talking about artists being not, not our legends not being protected, I, I stand by that. I don't feel like they are protected by a new generation. And you just broke it down as far as the TikToks and the start. They come out and they blow up and have instant success, and they haven't done no damn homework about it. They have no respect for our legends. So that that that, and that becomes just something that could that it could possibly become a problem. I, I think I saw uh, Ebro was talking about it at some point. He was talking about the, the lack of the gatekeepers. People talk about, hey, no gatekeepers. But the gatekeepers kept kept everything cool, and they picked the talent. And it, it, it is a, it's a give and take. Yeah, I love the fact that it's Wild Wild West because you don't have to go searching for a gatekeeper to put you on. But also, in a sense of it is, it's allowing just a free-for-all. And that's why all the music, like Tyler, the creator, had said, all of the music sounds like everybody. If you listen to a lot, it's you li- It's a it couple is. Bryson Tillers. It's a, it's, it's a couple. It's a couple Young Thugs. It's a couple people sounding like Future. It's a. Cu- I mean, goddamn! It's a dude. We did the concert. No shade to him, Hancho. My God, we be, we've been calling Quavo Hancho for years, and all of a sudden you just took his name. That was I, I honestly when the Hancho dude came out, I thought, oh, Quavo just going by his alter ego. This is gonna be. I thought it was Quavo too. You think? Thank you. But I, <laughs> and it's a whole other dude. But I'm I'm just saying. I like we we act like the generation. I just don't like the idea that the younger generation isn't like. It's just Not disrespectful. I think the younger generation, especially the ones who got some sense are making some moves. I'm not talking about ignorant people, but the, the people who uh make making some moves saw the pitfalls of the, the one before them. All them people, you know how many of them artists they saw that was broke? You know what I'm saying? So it was like it's they saw brokenness happen time after time. Every uh 
every documentary you see on these artists. They didn't have no money, but they had million-dollar record sales. They was touring all over the country and broke. So, yeah, this TikToker who's making this money looking at you like, you was broke. Mm -hmm. You might have some knowledge for me, but I can't listen to you because when you was 20 years, like, you ain't had no paper. I got money. So, no, I'm not listening to you because, you, obviously, you don't make good decisions. But he didn't, I mean, those, his bad decisions helped your good decisions. Exactly. That His so, bad decisions. I agree with that. Because, I, like, I can tell you, back then, I can tell you like this. You show a dude a million dollars, even if it's a Prince clip, the Prince clip was saying, with tw you know, uh, Mariah Carey getting $20 million an album, and Prince broke it down in a way uh, of a sense where she kind of had a bad deal. But let's go ahead. We got to wrap up because we had time. Right, uh -huh. uh, go ahead, Kiki. Come on, final thoughts. Um, Final thoughts. Shout out to the pod fam. Love y'all. We see y'all popping up and supporting TSR Live too. Um, Love that for us. So let's keep doing that. And uh, that's it. Yep, yep. Zach Book. Stay black, man, and don't die. <laughs> Love it. Hey, man, again, echoing both the thoughts. Stay black, don't die. And also keep... Keep, keep supporting TSR Live. And like that being said, or that being said, <laughs> what more can we say?